You think that's funny, do you? The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, hailed as one of the greatest games of all time. Ha! Cop that, Fortnite 2! Burn! Sick burn! Now we've got all the losers out of the way, let's talk about some real shit. Don't know why I did that. I think Oot, as it's called by only the coolest of people, is a very terrific game and it deserves every accolade that it receives. The biggest drawback for me is that I find it hard to get any sort of real enjoyment out of it these days. I've completed that game more times than I can count, which, granted, isn't a very high number. But every time I boot up the game, I sort of just run around in the world for a bit before stopping because there's nothing new for me to experience. And I'm from the internet generation, so I constantly need to be on... <laughs> no way. That's crazy. Oh. Enter the Ocarina of Time Randomizer. A modification to the original Legend of Zelda title that completely randomizes every chest in the game. That means that every chest in the game has the potential to have either a recovery heart or the f***ing silver gauntlets. You might already be thinking that that sounds impossible because you need at least a sword and shield to get past Cheese Dick Mido at the start of the game. And you'd be right. However, in the randomizer mod, it completely opens up the game. You won't be restricted by dickheads blocking entrances. However, you will be restricted by what items you have. The first chest I opened, the one that usually contains the Kiri sword ended up just having a heart piece. This could seem frustrating, but I loved it. It gave me a new challenge. Because I knew this game in and out, I was forced to be resourceful. I didn't have a sword, but I could get sticks. And a jumping attack with a stick does more damage than the Kakiri sword anyway. It suddenly became a game of resource collecting. I knew that I needed a slingshot to beat the Deku Tree, but I didn't know where it was. The chest that usually contained it had a red tunic. I then had to absolutely push my knowledge of the game. In total, before I needed the slingshot, in Kakiri Forest and the Deku Tree alone, there are 11 chests chests I could access that might give me something useful. It was all just rupees and heart pieces, but the potential was there. I knew that if I caught all the kakus in Kakariko village, Andrew the kaku lady would normally give me a bottle if I caught her stupid chickens for her because she can't control her pets. The bottle is an item that would be randomized. It turned out to be a heart container, but you know. I knew that Dampe the mongoloid in the graveyard could dig me up an item. I knew the locations of most of the secret grottos around Hyrule Field, which usually contained chests with five rupees. Those chests were now incredibly valuable. So my quest took on a whole different meaning. It completely opened the game up, leaving me not able to complete challenges until I was armed properly. It actually felt a lot more organic too. You no longer need to question why the item to defeat a dungeon's boss is contained within that dungeon. You know why that is? It's because the Lens of Truth was in the Goron city behind what I can only assume is the Goron's pantry instead of the bottom of the well that's 15 feet away from Bongo Bongo's front door. With the randomizer on, every chest becomes Schrodinger's chest. Eventually you'll come to a point where you want a specific item. Let's say it's the silver scale, because if you get the silver scale, then you can dive down deep enough to get the bottle with Princess Ruto's letter, and that could be the boomerang that you need to progress through Jabu Jabu's belly. So as far as you know, every chest you encounter has that silver scale that you need, and you don't know until you open it. Every chest is like Christmas. Of course, with the incredible highs of finding the mirror shield in a grotto in Hyrule Field, there's also the devastation of being rewarded with five rupees after you spend forever trying to glitch into Jabu Jabu's fat f***ing gullet just so you can access the chest that normally has a boomerang. Or being greeted with a booby-trapped ice chest after completing the ridiculous chest minigame. I'm not bitter. Chests aren't the only random element you can set either. You can set it so songs are random, meaning Impa could give you the Song of Storms, which would be perfect because then you can now get to the bottom of the well by making that weird gramophone dude flippy sh giving us access to that smorgasbord of tasty chests it contains. Of course, not getting Zelda's lullaby halts progress a little bit. You can't speak to Darunia or get King Zora to fart his way sideways for three weeks without it, meaning Dodongo's Cavern and Jabu Jabu are locked off. Unless you're lucky like I was and found the bomb bag early, meaning I was able to bomb a wall right near Goron City where I found the Goron bracelet. This meant I didn't need to speak to Darunia and get him to do his chimp dance to get into Dodongo's Cavern. Mm. You can also make it so the door of time is open, allowing you to switch back and forth between child and adult Link whenever you like, completely opening up the entire game world. I know it's not possible, but it would be amazing if there were a mod that would allow you to switch back and forth seamlessly between adult and young Link. Kind of like a Dark World button like they had in A Link to the Past, because it's super annoying having to travel all the way back to the Temple of Time every time you want to progress forwards and backwards through puberty. But I know that's asking way too much. Outside of chests and songs, there are also other modifiers you can add. You can randomize the color of each of Link's tunics. Annoyingly, I rolled the regular color on Child Link, but lucky me, my Goron's tunic was a delicious lime green instead. I've seen the other people start with gray or purple. All I wanted was a swanky hot pink for my Link, but alas, it was not to be. 
I did get orange for my Zora's tunic though, so haha, <laughs> yay, small victories. Eventually you'll get all the items you need and it plays out like a regular game of Ocarina of Time, but I highly doubt you'll consistently get items in the correct enough order to complete the dungeons the way they were supposed to be completed, which means no two runs of the game will be the same. The order I completed the dungeons in was the Deku Tree, Half of Jabu Jabu, Bottom of the Well, Dodongo's Cavern, Ice Cavern, Part of the Spirit Temple, The Forest Temple, Gerudo Fortress, More of the Spirit Temple, Half of the Fire Temple, The Rest of Jabu Jabu, The Shadow Temple, The Water Temple, the the rest of the Spirit Temple, part of Ganon's Castle, the other half of the Fire Temple, and then back to Ganon's Castle. I don't think any game is perfect. Maybe perfect isn't the right word I'm looking for. But there are not a lot of games, despite how well loved they are, that can be replayed over and over again for years to come. There are a few that come close, but I think, eventually, as girthy humans, we all crave a new experience. Sometimes in that same game world. Sometimes we just want more out of a game than we've already gotten. The time spent in that world was so amazing and so memorable that you just want to go back. Kind of like putting on a comfy hoodie or going back to a childhood home. It's different, but it's comfy. That's what this randomizer mod is. Having an open world ocarina of time where you have to search for and find every item you need, putting your knowledge to the absolute test. It's amazing. It's the best experience I've had with ocarina of time in about 15 years. It turns out that there's a randomizer mod for Wind Waker too, so I'm gonna check that out very soon. Ooh, do you think there's a Twilight Princess randomizer mod where it removes all the shitty wolf parts? Or, or they could have a randomizer mod for Skyward Sword where it just deletes the game from existence. That would be amazing. That's it from me guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to try out the randomizer, there's a link in the description below. Leave a like if you like this video. Subscribe to this channel so you can join the dream pod. I'll be back soon with some cool videos, but I'm moving house. So who knows what's gonna happen there. Thank you again for watching. Sweet dreams. Mwah.